blonde hair, blue eyes, Caucasian. He woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. They say he healthy, got a great education, but moms and pops tend to ignore him from time to time. So he decides it's time to walk inside that church and pull that trigger until those bullets run out. Police officer at the crime scene, eight bodies on the ground, places him in the backseat of the police car, drives him downtown. Dark brownish, black hair, brown eyes, African, black, African-American, Caribbean, Moroccan, maybe all of the above. He woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. They say he ain't healthy. Teachers label him ADHD. He ain't seen moms in three days. Pops been in prison for a decade. And today he decides the day he gonna tell the police about the last time they killed a black man for no apparent reason. That's another black boy killed by law enforcement for no apparent reason and CNN has a story to tell. A tragic thing happened today in North Carolina. Lives were lost due to rapid gunfire and reports say Johnny was dealing with some issues at home. Parents, love your children. Meanwhile in Baltimore, gang affiliated a teenager who had disciplinary problems at school attacked an officer today and it might have cost him his life. And details coming soon. And we still find a way to say that all lives matter. I agree. I think that the social media um, plight in this particular gen gen generation has been has been wonderful. I, I think it's one of the best things that we've seen. I think it gave us another platform for people to see what it is that we're going through that maybe they might not have seen if we just had media outlets or news outlets, right? We become the media now. We become uh, the voice of our story instead of allowing other people to put certain perspectives on our story, right? I think without social media, then this this onslaught on black bodies in America that's going on right now isn't as prevalent. <laughs> Guys, what is he doing? I moved. Hey guys, listen. Everyone, listen. I moved out of the way. I complied, and they're arresting me. You know, I grew up in a household where both of my parents were, or in a system in some type of capacity. Both of my parents were in and out of jail. Both of my parents were, were drug addicts, and um, uh, I just was fortunate enough to go to a school that allowed me the platform to get in contact with this man by the name of Dr. Ren Faris. Um, where I started a program that uh, that allowed college students to go into the prisons and and to teach different concepts. And, um, and at the time, I was given an opportunity to use my poetry as one of those platforms. You see, the fair skin is running for victory, and we ain't never been invited to the race. Or because of our race, we ain't never felt the metal, we ain't never felt the ambiance of an invitational. All we know is survival, so they teach them to be scared of us. We should be scared of them. Uh, and I think that's where this activism or this advocacy sparked for me. Because I'm a young activist, you know? Um, and, uh, but King was a young activist. Um, the, the Freedom Riders, they were young activists. You feel me? Like, these movements have always been 
been um, led by young people who are going through these stages of liberation and change and maturity. We look at the history of America. We look about. We look at the things that we've gotten America to give us. You know, whether that be the Civil Rights Act, whether that be the ability. Whether, whether that be like housing, whatever has been economically given to us or politically given to us to give us, to make us feel like we're equal in this country, it has all came out of activism. It has all came out of force. America doesn't know how to love. America doesn't know how to forgive. I see the voids that we have. I see that we struggle in a moment that American can just wake up and say, you know what? They're the same as us, we're all humans, we all have the same rights, we all have the same will, we all have the same opportunity. I think it's the moment we have to stop fighting so hard. It's the moment we have to stop shedding so many tears, the moment we have to start, stop sacrificing so many bodies. We've showed strides of getting better. I think America has shown that they have the ability to at least fake the funk enough for us to feel like we're moving forward. Um, I think the realism in me, the realism in me would say, hell no, nothing's going to change. There is a specific problem that is happening in the African American community that's not happening in other communities. And that is a legitimate issue that we've got to address. <laughs> The country has reached a very desperate crisis where most black people are saying either give it to us or blow up the system. And I don't, I don't think America at this point has the luxury to sit around and decide. I think with all deliberate speed, which means right now, these grievances must be redressed. Black people must be brought in as black Americans into the American family with all the rights and privileges and all the psychological rights and privileges that accrue to them. The African American community is not just making this up. And they're, it's not just something being politicized. It, it, it's real. And, and there's a history behind it. And we have to take it seriously. Where do you see the movement going with this new blood um, of young activists and, and advocates in the next five years? For me, specifically, I, I can speak for what it is that I see people doing on the grassroots level in, a, in the areas I'm functioning in. And I think that there will be a good balance of both policy and law and, and advocacy. Where do you see us going with the momentum of the Black Lives Matter movement that we have right now in the next few years? Well, I think, uh, I think if you look at the history of black people in America, there's never been a question about our resiliency. It's never been a question about our strength. And I don't think what's been happening surrounding the race right now is gonna stop us from continuing to move forward. I feel like we've always shown some type of, of growth, some type of ability to, to jump over the hurdles put in place um, that are attempting to slow us down. Um, I think we'll continue to strive. I think that we'll continue to find ways to jump through the loopholes. I think that we'll continue to find ways to prosper as a, as a race. However, I do think the patience, I think violence may continue to rise. Right, I think, I think moments of disparity, I think moments of, of hostility will continue to exacerbate, but I think the state of the black race, I think we'll be okay.